All right, guys, what's going on? It's John. So today we're going to talk about how you can maximize your SAT score. Okay. So when you go to these SAT prep places, what's, what's, what's going to happen 90% of the time is that they're going to give you material materials for reading and writing and math at the same time. What they want you to do is study both of them at the same time, actually all three of them at the same time and raise the score. Right. So this is something, this is the way I studied um, back in high school as well. This is called the traditional method. Okay. And traditional method, the idea is raise three, raise all three, raise all three scores. And I'm personally very against this method because it's very inefficient. So raise three at the same time is very inefficient. And here's why. So you think of it like this. Let's say you're in school and you have to study for social studies or I don't know, AP World History, AP Calc, and AP Science at the same time. These three, these three things have no relation to each other. I mean, if you study one thing, if you study world history, it's not going to help you in uh, math. And if you study math, it's not going to help you in I don't know, AP Biology. See, there's no relationship at all. And that's the same thing for SAT. Reading, writing, math have no relationship at all. If you study one thing, it's not going to help you the other. So there's really no benefit in studying for all three things at the same time. It's very inefficient. Your attention is divided and your score is going to go up very slowly relative to just focusing on one thing at the same time, right? So traditional method, very inefficient, studying all three at the same time, right? So the solution to this problem of diverting your attention, folks, splitting your attention is by utilizing what's known as the super score method. Right. So I'm pretty sure you guys all know what super scoring is, but let me just give you a quick rundown on what it is, just in case you're like a freshman, sophomore, don't really know too much about it. Okay. So in SAT, there's math section and there's reading and writing section, right? Let's say you decide to take the exam for the first time and you did really well on math, right? So let's say you got, I don't know, you got 700, but you really sucked at reading and writing. So you got maybe, I don't know, 500. And the second time you take it, you, I mean, you're really traumatized by the low score that you got, 500. So what happens is you're going to study reading and writing like a lot and you try to take it again. So second time you take it, what's going to happen is that your reading and writing score goes up to 700 because you study so much for it. But math score, you didn't really study at all. You forgot a couple of stuff and you just, I don't know, got 500, right? So if you look at the overall scores, for the first exam, total score is 1,200, and it's the same for the second exam as well. But thing is, for the second exam, you did really well on reading and writing. For, uh, for this exam, you did really well on math. And what SuperScore does is, when you apply to colleges, they're not going to look at these 1,200, but they're going to look at the highest section score from each of your exam, ex each of your exams. Actually, let me rephrase that. They're going to look at the highest SUK score from each of your section, whether it's from the same exam or not. Okay, so they're going to take the highest score from math, which is 700, and the highest score from reading and writing, which is 700. So essentially, when you apply to colleges, your SAT score is 1400. Does that make sense? So super score, take the highest score, and that's your score. Okay, so how does, how does that solve the problem for traditional method? Well, remember what we talked about traditional method? When you're trying to erase all three things at the same time, your attention is divided, your time is divided, so your score is going to go up slower relatively, right? But super score tells us that they're going to look at the highest score from each of your sections. So th this tells us that there's really no point of studying for two sections or three different things at the same time. Your best bet is to focus on just one thing, raise it up like that, and then focus on the other one, raise it like that, and have a super high score instead of trying to study for both of them and try to raise it at the same time. Does that make sense? So first benefit of super score method is that your focus is on one subject, which is very efficient, okay? There's another benefit to studying for one exam at the same time, and that is that when you're taking the SAT, your energy is limited. Right? So when it comes to section one, two, three, four, 
that's reading, writing, math, math calculator. That's 65 minutes, 35 minutes, 25, and 55 minutes. And if you add it all up, that's almost over three and a half hours, right? And the thing is, no matter how in how good of a condition that you are in, if you're trying to focus for three and a half hours, you're probably going to be drained by toward the end, right? So generally what I see is that people do like really well on reading and writing. I know that they can do really well on math, but their scores suffer because they are really tired. They're brain dead, right? They're burnt out. So what super scoring allows us to do is we, um, uh, we can strategize which section to focus on because if you look at super score, it really doesn't matter if you do well in reading and writing if you can do really well in math, right? So in general, my students take about two exams. And what happens is for the first exam, they focus on math. So first, for when you're trying to focus on math, reading and writing section, you just kind of sleep, well, you don't want to sleep through it. You don't want to Christmas tree it. You just want to try it, but you want to maybe put like a 50% effort into it. That way you have all these energies reserved in your brain so that you can focus on math section and maximize that score, right? So my student would take the math, uh, first exam and then this is what's gonna happen. Their math is gonna be really good, but their reading and writing is gonna suffer because they barely tried in it, right? And most importantly, they didn't really prepare for it at all. And once they get the high enough of a score, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna focus on reading and writing, raise the reading and writing score up. And when we take the exam for the second time, it's, in the, it's the beginning two sections. We're gonna try to use all of our energy. We're not gonna save any energy for math section because we already got the high score. Colleges are gonna look at that high score and really don't care about the math scores. That's a bad score that we're gonna get later, right? So second exam, focus on reading and writing. Kind of just try on math, but you're probably not gonna have any energy left, right? So second time you take it, you're gonna get a score like that. So even though it's 1200 on each exam, your final score that you're gonna to send to colleges are going to be, is actually going to be 1400. Does that make sense? So that's the benefit, that's the power of utilizing a super score method. Okay, so we're gonna, let's summarize what we just talked about today because there was a lot of information. So when it comes to studying for the SAT, what many people are aware of is the traditional method trying to raise all three scores at the same time. And as we all know, it's very inefficient. So. The solution to that is going to be a super score method where you focus on each, each section for each exam because at the end, they're gonna only look at your highest score. And two benefits to that, two, ben two benefits to super score method is that first, you get, it allows you to focus on just one subject at a time, which is very efficient. And second, you're going, uh, you have limited energy anyways, so it allows you to um, strategically, strategically separate which section you're going to focus on for each exam so that you can maximize your performance. Does that make sense? Good. Right, so that's it for today's video. If you have any guys, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drip, drop them down below. And if you guys appreciate, if you guys found this video valuable, make sure you like and subscribe and there's going to be more to come. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.